Hey everyone, this is Vicki from Messy Table Studio. I'm here with a video today that is sort of a flip through, but mostly a tutorial on a tutorial on how to do a hardcover on a mini book. I saw this idea on Pinterest. Geez, I don't think it's been over a year ago, and I really fell in love with the idea. Plus. I have enough supplies to make a bazillion of them. <laughs> um, you know, when you buy popsicle sticks, they don't come like 10 or 20, it's like a thousand. And then the little mini ones are the same way. You get a bazillion. Same with clothespins and all that stuff. So I put it, my, my niece gave me this for one Christmas. My niece Anne gave this to me for one uh, Christmas one year. So I decided this was would be my wooden and head pin storage, although head pins are going to move into a, diff a drawer, but and that'll give me more room for other things. Oh yeah, and I evidently I needed uh, twist ties. <laughs> and pom-poms. So anyway, <laughs> I did label everything so I knew where it was. Alright, so there are the supplies, what you're going to need for book number one and book number two are the regular size uncolored popsicle sticks. Then for the second part of this one, you're going to need the little mini popsicle sticks. And then you'll get, you're going to need some of them for the for the larger journal or larger art book, whatever you guys want to call it. All right, let me put this away. And this is what we're going to do. Now, I'm going to show you this first one because this is the one I did that I made mistakes on. So then I made a second one because I thought I would improve on those mistakes. I think I did. Pretty close. All right, so the premise of this is is that you glue all these popsicle sticks on a flat surface together and you make two of them because you need um, a front gate and a back gate. And it's made to look like, you know, a front gate and a back gate. Then you will need the short popsicle sticks because this this one across here and the one across the top and the bottom are stabilizers for the ones in the background. And you do that on the front and the back both. The small one, um, I tried doing this across here but it looked really weird. So I ended up just putting them across this way for the small popsicle sticks on the front and the back. You're going to need some cardstock. I think cardstock is probably your best bet. Computer paper is not, I don't think, is strong enough to do this with. And you're going to need some kind of a measuring tool. You're going to need a paper cutter, so on and so forth. You know, your usual supplies to make stuff and some glue. Now, I did use wood glue on this, and I think I'll have to go hunt it down out of my husband's shop. But I think tacky glue will be just as good. But you do whatever you want for whatever you've got on hand. Don't go out and buy a bunch of stuff because that's not what this is about. Okay, so I measured, I measured my in part, my innards, my journal part, the part where I made the, the book. And as best I can tell, it is five inches, four inches. So you will need, this one I have 12, one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. You will need twelve pieces of cardstock of your choosing. I used white because I really wasn't sure what I was doing. And they need to be four about four inches in height and width. They need to be about, what's this one? Let's see, let's try this one. About two and a half inches. You could do three and a quarter if you want them to stretch out a little further in the fence there. I think the cover one might be, that's a little over two and a half inches. It's two and five eighths. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to show you the moving parts to this. And I'm going to, I think I'm going to make this a two-part video because this and this are a little different. And I'm going to show you a mistake that I made 
in this one that I corrected in this one. I was so excited about this that, you know, I'm used to making books that have spines on them. This does not have a spine. None, to, none as we think of in reg, as regular spines. So it's held together in an accordion, a very thin little accordion style piece of paper, uh, cardstock. But I didn't like seeing the accordion here, so I took scrapbook paper and glued it before I glued it into the book, or the wood pieces. I glued it on to the loose stuff so you don't see it. The problem is, when you open it, this is what happens. That right there. It should freely move, and it's very stiff and rigid because I glued the accordion together. This, this is better because I did not glue anything on the end. The book opens more easily and... See what I'm talking about? It's different. All right, so this one, I did not do the paper over it. I left the folded accordion stuff open and I, I did go back after I made this and painted it white, really white, so it would not be a distraction. Um, if you're going to paint your sticks or you're not going to paint your sticks any kind of a color, then I would suggest that maybe you put a very light, I don't know, some kind of tone that will match the stick so it's not a distraction. Unless the white doesn't bother you. It bothers me, but it might not bother you guys. So I made this one a little smaller to fit the small popsicle sticks. I love this. I just adore this. All right, so let's get started. Okay, so I have basic white cardstock, and I don't know the weight of it. It's just whatever I have on hand. And I'm cutting it into you know, the four inches for this right here, all right? And then I'm cutting another one because I need 12. And then I think I'm going to make these, what did I say, two something? Yeah. I think I'm going to make these two and a half. Maybe two and five eighths. I'll do two and five eighths. So let's cut these at two and five, eight, five eighths. So that's four eighths, one eighth. Two and five eighths. One. All right, I'll be back after I finish cutting this. You know, you don't need to see this part. <laughs> okay. So here is what you need for the first part. Plain cardstock, four by two and five eighths, and you need 12 pieces. Here are my 12 pieces. You may, I, I don't know how, I, I missed cut my, a couple of mine, but it's all good. All right, so in order to make the accordion piece that you need to put all the parts together, you need one more long strip of four inches of the cardstock. Now, depending on how much you want to stick out, this part right here will determine how much you pleat this. Now, you're going to need a bone folder or something like this, you know, a board. All right, so we're not going to need this whole piece of paper, but what we need to do is make enough accordion folds in this that we can glue. Whoops, that's my other paper. Two of these together over the hump in the accordion, and that will be the front and the back, except for the last two pieces because they will be glued to the front and the back. Okay, so you won't you won't make a picture on the back side of this one and you won't have a picture on the back side of this one because they're going to be glued to your wood pieces. Then you all these others are double sided. So this is what's okay, we're all scored. I don't know, wait, can you see this? It's white. It's kind of hard to see, but you'll see it now. All right, so I need to make sure I have the up piece so that goes on there. All right, so what I'm going to do is 
I'm going to go like this. I'm going to go forward and backward. And let me let me tell you this, that if you don't score it and keep an eye on it, you're going to get creep. You know what creep is, right? Those of you who've made books, is that your accordion style should stack one on top of the other, but creep will make it like this, like stairs. And you don't want that. You want them to lay one right on top of the other when you do this. So be sure when you do it that you scooch this over so that it's even before you crease it. Because you need these guys to sit one on top of the other. See, I'm throwing stuff on my table here, and now my Roku just turned itself on. <laughs> All right, so you need these guys not to get creep. So make sure, see, I see a tiny bit of creep right here, and I want to make sure that I don't let that get, I don't want that to be carried away with my piece. I want to make sure that all my stuff is lined up as best I can, so I'm going to nudge, you know that's an official craft term, I'm going to nudge my stuff back and forth and take a look at it every time to make sure it's smooth there because... When you use this, this has width in it, and this is what causes the creep for the accordion, is the score mark you made in it. All right, go back. Let's take a look. I'm going to make sure my creep is good, and it's starting to creep again. So I'm going to go out this way. Okay, and I make finished sure doing that's... most of them together, and the, little, the ends we'll take care in a second. All right, so here we have peaks and valleys. I'm going to leave this open because I went back and I looked at that and all there is is just that one little sliver down this one that is glued onto the popsicle sticks and then the other piece is glued on top of that. Then we start with the peaks and the valleys. This is what's going to happen. This is going to be glued to the wood. You're going to have to take, now I use double sided tape. And I glued in between, I mean glued, I taped in between these to mash them together. All right, so then you'll go through that and do that so that you can do all of your, um, your pieces. So what you'll end up with is one on this side, and you cover it up so you don't, you know, there's nothing showing. And then you'll take the other one if I can pick it up right. And it will be glued onto the other side of the mountain. Then you have another mountain that's going to come together, and you're going to glue it on the back side so you, it's pinched together. Then you're going to glue another one on this side of the mountain, and another one on this side of the mountain. All right, and you got to make sure they're lined up. Try to get them on there. I don't think I cut mine quite straight. Anyway, so that's what's going to end up doing. And then when you open the book, this, there'll be one that's glued to the popsicle sticks. Then you start with your glued two, that's three, number four and five, and then you make it all the way down to 12. So let me come back after I have, or maybe I can do this while you guys are on here. Let me go get my tape. Okay, those of you who have ATG guns, go get them right now. Or those little bitty tapey things, you know, the little handheld models, perfect for this. All right, so I'm gonna try and use up some of the tape that I've got right now. So this is going to be glued to the wood, and I need these two right here to be glued together, or taped together. So I'm going to put this big old piece of tape in here, because I'm going to use it up. Alright, I'm going to take my bone folder and burnish it a little bit, because I want you to see what it's going to look like. It's not hard to imagine, right? There we go. And I'm going to pinch these two together. And now they're glued and it's nice and sturdy. So you're going to keep doing that all the way through here until you get to the end. And it doesn't matter if you have extra, no biggie. You can use it for stu other stuff. You know the accordion books that I did with the fish and the flowers and the houses? That's exactly what this is based on, is accordion style. All right? Okay, I'll just see so you guys. Let me have you go in a, whoops, have you go in a little bit further because I'm going to show you a good way to remember this. Let's use our lid on this one. Yep. Okay. So if you have a hard time remembering, what you do is you put on here 
um, on fence. Okay, on fence. Then put number one, two. One, two, uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and then the last one will be number twelve. So the last one, I don't really need to have it done double. I should have stopped because so, the twelfth one, let me pull this apart, because the twelfth one is going to be sticking onto the fence for the back cover. So this right here will be on the back cover. So let me cut this off. Let me undo this. All right, so there we go. And this will say number 12, back fence. Okay, so this is what we've got. We've got front fence, and then all of these are labeled for what number card will go in its place. Number 11, and then this will be glued. So these two right here will be glued to the wood. These two right here under my fingers. And the rest of this will move. Here, let me, maybe that'll help a little bit. All right, so I decided to show you how to do this real quick. So I have one, two, three, four, five of these glued together. I just so happens I had a small um, bottle of Elmer's wood glue. Although I think any kind of Elmer's would do just fine, or tacky glue, whatever. So I took a toothpick, and I'm just running it down the sides of the stick itself. I don't want a lot of sticky stuff sticking up, you know, because I have to take care of that. All right. I had a board and I put um, cling wrap over it. And then I'm just gluing these guys together. And I'm going to let them sit overnight, so this will be the last recording. I'll do all four, the fronts and the backs, um, to that, tonight, and then leave them to sit overnight so that they are ready to go for tomorrow when I want to record the rest of this tomorrow. Get a little sloppy here. And just like I said, be sure that the bottoms are even as best you can. Just like so many other things, these sticks are not perfectly straight. See, there's a gap in there, or a gap up here, one of the two. I can't make it B 
be even on both. It'll probably be covered up with that piece that goes across. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One more. and all of them have dried and they peeled right off of this the plastic wrap perfectly now what did happen is and I don't know if you guys can see this or not you see any shiny oh no oh there you go the shine right here that is from me getting a little overzealous with oh there you go overzealous with the glue so you can do a couple things. You can take, uh, don't use a baby wipe. You can take a wet towel or you can take uh, an emery board of some sort. You know, like the kind that they use on false fingernails. The uh, ones that are really cheap at uh, Dollar Tree. You can take this and you can lightly sand over it. And look, what's going. see, it's going to turn it a, a weird color because this thing is not real clean. Let me try on the clean end. And you can kind of sand it a little bit. Yes, it's going to change the color of the wood because my uh, emery board is dirty. But use a clean emery board. And then just kind of, because this is basically a very fine grit sandpaper. So you can kind of rough it up a little bit and, and get some of the glue off. You may not be able to get all of it off, but you can get some of it off. Do that before you start painting so that the glue does not stop your paint from sticking to the wood. Okay, so it's been overnight and the paint dried and I scuffed the gate up with my trusty little, uh oh, where did it go? Trusty little, and it's gone. <laughs> oh, here it is. My trusty little emery board for acrylic nails. So all I did was is take this. I did the edges or anything that was standing up high enough that I could reach it with this. And you can get really crazy. You can also get one of those sanding sponges, which I think would be a lot easier than this thing. But to be honest with you, I'm not spending any more money on this project. So I'm not spending, yeah, any more money on this project because I guess I spent money on the paint the other day. So there's that. They did the front and the back, and then they're going to go together like that. All right, so now comes the gluing thing. Now remember the other day, yesterday we glued the cards on either side and I did try to trim the ends and all I did was make it worse so I stopped eventually you have to know when to give up the ghost but I have them all in here they're all glued in which I suggest that you decorate them first after I've been thinking about it I think you should decorate them first and then glue them in it might be easier that way I don't know we'll find out it's been a while since I made this all right so we're going to glue this onto here so this is the flap that was labeled the back, uh, whoops. This is the flap that was labeled number one because number one is going to be glued over this. So when you do this, you need to be sure to go this way, lay it down at the edge and fold it over while you got the glue on it and make sure that it is lined up, not in too far, not out too far, but it needs to be flat and even with the wooden piece, you know, with the fence piece, and then kind of mash down on it. And the best thing to do would be to let it dry. Of course, you know I never do anything that's the best thing to do. <laughs> there you go. And then you take your extra piece that you had this way and then you take some liberally put glue on it because you're sticking it to a painted wooden surface you want to make sure that bad boy stays and then 
then you take it and you butt it up against the fold. Kind of mop up your glue on the sloppy gluer. Now, this is too skinny, but it does match up with the rest of the pages. I don't I think it's too skinny, but that's what I cut, so I'm gonna live with it. I may add another strip on here and then make the front and the back larger than what the original pages are. So again, going to do the back. Here's the flap we left. Make sure you line it up with the fence edge. This is the back. Make sure you have this on the outside. Then you can take this and make sure whoa, you get it even. You might have to take a clip and let it let it sit overnight. For some reason my sticks are a little bit bowed so it's not laying as nicely as I would like it to. But the original idea is still there. So that you can open the book and you can make it basically go flat. Pretty good, huh? All right, so let me glue this last little card. See, I think this one's a little bigger than the other one. Okay, whoops. Glue this liberally on the back of the card. And I think I would clip it just to be on the safe side and leave it overnight so that it glues properly. But wipe up all the glue first because the last thing you want is to um, clip it together and then you've glued all the pages together overnight. Because this one does not lay as nicely as the green one, I think I could put more accordions in here and just glued them onto that last piece and kept going and giving I could have given it a little more bulk and I th think it would have um, sat up a lot nicer where did I put my other ones oh I guess I put them away all right so this is an idea whose time has come you know, it's it's a great idea to to try something new. I know we all like the soft cover books and stuff, but the the um, the hard ones are pretty cool too. I, I like the wooden ones; they're they're nice. All right, so I'm gonna mash it, mash, mash. And you don't want too much of this back piece sticking out here. You want it to be flush. Um, let me give you some ideas for this. If you like seascapes, a great thing to do would be to put some kind of uh, depth on the front by adding, I don't know, sea sponges or shells or whatever and sand on the bottom like a sand dune, like, like there's sand at the bottom. Or if you like flowers where there's flower box, hang yourself a little flower box right here and put flowers come out. There's a million ways to decorate the front the front of the fence. Well, I would leave the back alone, but the front, you could do a bazillion cool ideas too. So there it is all finished. And eventually I will put some kind of pictures or something on the inside of it. Glue papers, collage, I don't know. I, I don't know what I'll do with it, but there it is all finished. Uh, the little one, same idea applies. Make yourself the tiny little 
um, accordion, sand it, you know, glue it on, cut your little pieces to size, and then you can use this for the front of a book. That one's crooked. You can use that for the front of a book. I see this is not glued straight up and down, so now that is the back of the book. <laughs> All right, so that's it for me. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.